Let's talk briefly about what we mean by the long run and the short run in microeconomics. We have discussed the general problem facing the firm. They have a known production function and they must decide on how much to produce and how much of each production factor to use in the production. So far, they have been free to select any amount of each production factor. In reality, the decision problem faced by the firm is a repeated problem and it may be difficult to change the amount of a production factor from one decision to the next. If the amount of at least one production factor is fixed at the given level, then we say that the firm is facing a short-run decision problem. If the firm is free to select any amount for all the production factors, then we say that they are facing a long-run decision problem. Here is an example. The production function is y equal to 100 square root of x1 times x2. If the firm is free to pick x1 and x2 to be any value it likes, then they are facing a long-run decision problem. If, for example, x2 is fixed at a given value, x2 is equal to a constant x2 bar, say 4, then the firm is facing a short-run decision problem. If we substitute x2 equal to 4 into the production function, we get what is called the short-run production function. y is now just a function of x1. y is equal to 200 times the square root of x1. In the short run, the firm only has one decision to make, and that is how much to produce. Once they have decided on y, they must pick x1 such that 200 times the square root of x1 is equal to the desired level of production. Consider a firm with a given production function, y is equal to f of x1 and x2. What would happen if this firm doubled the amount of both production factors? We simply imagine that the firm creates a complete replica of existing facilities. If production is precisely doubled, then we say that the firm produces with a constant return to scale. It may also be the case that the firm will produce more than twice as much as before, in which case we say that there is an increasing return to scale. If the new production level is less than twice as much as before, we are facing a decreasing return to scale. There are many reasons for why the return to scale is not necessarily constant. For example, a large firm may be more difficult to manage than a small firm. On the other hand, a large firm may utilize synergy effects not available to a small firm. Let's see how to represent these three cases mathematically. First, we do not want to restrict ourselves to the case of precisely doubling each of the production factors. We also want to allow for tripling all factors or cutting them all in half. So let's introduce a variable t, where t is equal to 2 if we double all factors, it's equal to 0.5 if we cut them all in half, and so on. We will call x1, x2 our old or initial factor bundle. If we multiply the amount of each production factor by t, we have our new factor bundle. For example, if t is 2, our new bundle is 2x1, 2x2. The old level of production is f of x1, x2. This is how much we produce with the original bundle x1, x2. Our new production level with the bundle tx1, tx2 is f of tx1, tx2. We have a constant return to scale if the new level of production is precisely t times as large as the old level of production for all values of t. If you find this equation hard to decipher, replace t with the number 2. The condition we have stated for constant return to scale is the same as saying that f is homogeneous of degree 1. The firm produces under an increasing return to scale if the new level of production is strictly greater than t times the old level of production for all t strictly greater than 1. T strictly greater than 1 means that we are making the firm bigger. Finally, if the new production level is less than t times the old level for all t greater than 1, then we have decreasing return to scale. Let's look at some examples of return to scale. In my first example, my production function is our old friend 100 times the square root of x1 times x2. To find the new level of production, f of t x1, t x2, we replace x1 with t x1 and x2 with t x2. And we have 100 times the square root of t x1 multiplied by t x2. t x1 times t x2 is the same as t squared multiplied by x1 x2. And we can take t squared outside the square root sign. 
100t times the square root of x1 times x2. This expression can be written as t times our production function f of x1 comma x2 and we have proved that this production function displays constant return to scale. If you, for example, double all the production factors, output will double. If you triple them all, output will triple and so on. In my next production function, f of x1 comma x2 is 100 times x1 times x2. My new level of production is 100 t squared times x1 times x2, which we can write as t times t f of x1 comma x2. For example, if t is equal to 2, a doubling of all production factors will lead to a quadrupling of output. Formally, t times t f of x1 comma x2 is strictly greater than t f of x1 comma x2 if t is strictly greater than 1, proving that we have an increasing return to scale. Here is my final return to scale example. f of x1 is equal to 100 times x1 raised to 1 third times x2 raised to 1 third. Here is f of tx1 comma tx2, just swapping x1 with tx1 and x2 with tx2. Simplifying, this becomes 100 times t raised to 2 thirds times x1 raised to 1 third times x2 raised to 1 third. For t equal to 2, t raised to 2 thirds is approximately 1.59. Output has increased by 59%, less than 100% when we doubled inputs. Formally, we can write our expression as t raised to minus 1 third times t f of x1 comma x2. And since t raised to minus 1 third is less than 1 when t is greater than 1, return to scale is decreasing.